Welcome back to another tabletop review. Today we'll look at the Sig Sauer P239 40 caliber semi-automatic pistol. If you've watched many of my videos, you know I'm a bit of a collector. I tend to look at used guns and display cases first thing when I'm visiting my local gun shops. I like the classic and unusual, and there are certain makes like Sig Sauer that always gets my attention. Obviously, I like good deals too. So when I saw this SIG P239 at a local gun store a while back, I was intrigued. When I saw it was a 40 caliber, I walked away. I didn't own any 40 caliber guns, not one, but I did two things before I left the store. First, I checked the shelves for ammo. That's the second thing I do whenever I visit a gun store. This was the height of the ammo shortage, and I was surprised to find plenty of boxes of 40 Smith & Wesson on the shelves reasonably priced and with no purchase limits. Interesting. The second thing I did was use my phone to check the internet for the current value and sale history of the P239. Knew this gun would have cost close to a thousand dollars. The used gun value at that time was about 500 and the store was willing to sell it to me for that. I went back to the gun counter and asked what came with it and when the clerk found its case we were both surprised to find all the original paperwork five extra magazines worth about $45 each, wraparound hoe grips worth about $24, a DeSantis gun hide tuck this to handgun holster worth about $50, and a new set of True Dot Sure Shot Trinium Night Sights worth about $90. That was a total of about $400 in extras. Of course the gun originally came with two magazines and Sig Light Night Sights so the actual value of these extras was closer to about $275 to me but still the gun itself looked very clean. No external wear at all, almost like new. The clerk and I looked at each other and he said to me, I guess you just bought your first 40 caliber pistol. And so I did. Now let's make sure that this gun is cleared first. By the way, if you enjoy this review, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Now I reviewed the Sig Sauer company in more detail in previous videos, so I'll only point out that Sig Sauer was the result of the merging of two sister companies, Swiss-based Sig, a leading manufacturer of firearms for more than 150 years, and the German company Sauer that came together in 1976 under the name Sig Sauer. A separate company, Sig Arms, was founded in Virginia in 1985 to import and distribute Sig Arm firearms and its headquarters was moved to New Hampshire in 1990. Sig Sauer has a reputation for high quality metal guns produced with an extraordinary level of attention to detail. I think the P239 is probably one of its finest examples. The P239 was produced between 1996 and 2016 and made available in 9mm, 357 SIG, or 40 Smith & Wesson. The P239 was designed to meet the demands of law enforcement and federal agents for a slim, single-stack pistol for concealment. The P239 was meant to be carried as a backup or off-duty pistol. Now it's important to note that although much has changed since this gun first came out. In the mid-1990s, there probably weren't many pistols equal to, let alone better, than the P239 in my opinion. This particular pistol was one of the last ones made in 2016. As you may know from my other reviews, if I know a movie connection for one of these classic firearms, I try to point that out. The SIG P239 has been in a bunch of films, but I only mentioned a few here the 1997 James Bond film Tomorrow Never Dies in which the villain Jonathan Price played by Elliot Carver displays a SIG P239. The 2003 French comedy Ruby and Quentin in which a two-tone P239 is featured in the final scene. And the 2007 film Boarding Gate with Asia Argento as Sandra who is featured using a suppressed SIG P239. As for packaging, I've already talked about how I found this particular P239, so let's take a quick look at how the P239 was typically packaged. Uh, the original case is fairly rugged, uh, lockable hard plastic, it has fairly nice foam padding, and there would have been, of course, the paperwork, including the manual, an extra magazine, and a lock. 
as I already mentioned, this one also came with the original bill of sale and it sold originally for $725 new. That was a pretty good, pretty good price back then. And of course, as I said, it had a new set of really bright True Dot Sure Shot Trinium Night Sights. The original Sig, Sig Light Night Sights are not nearly as bright. It had the uh, DeSantis holster, it had the Hogue grips, and it had the extra magazines. So it was actually a pretty good deal. As for specifications, the Sig Sauer P239 was available in 9mm, 357 Sig, or 40 Smith & Wesson. And there were a number of different models available. This is the Nitron Compact 40 caliber model. By the way, the 357 barrel and mags are interchangeable with the 40 caliber, so I could change out the barrel and mags in this gun if I wanted. I think that's pretty cool. The slide is stainless steel with a hard coat anodized finish. Barrel length is 3.6 inches and it's been heat treated for ruggedness and durability. These updated sights are the excellent True Dot Sure Shot Turnium Night Sights, but the uh, P239 originally came with Sig Light Night Sights. The frame is aluminum alloy. Overall length is 6.6 .6 inches. Height is 4.1 inches. The width is 1.2 inches. Weight is 39.5 ounces. The grips are polymer. The action is semi-automatic, double action, single action. Double action trigger pull is about 10 pounds. Single action is 4.4 pounds. Reset. Seems a little long, but light and crisp. The decocker is very, very smooth. Slide release back here is large and fairly easy to use. The mag release is nicely positioned, releasing the mag magazines uh, smoothly. Two seven round magazines were provided with the 40 caliber. Now, as a compact uh, firearm, this 40 caliber P239 is actually a little smaller than the other SIG compacts and is considered to be slim, yet easy to handle. If you're concerned about caliber compromise for your concealed carry weapon, this may be the gun for you. It's slim and compact, yet has the feel and capability of a big gun. Now I've heard a lot of gripes regarding the P239 and it seems to depend on your hands and how you intend to use this pistol. If it's going to be your everyday concealed carry weapon, you don't want the grips to be too sticky, that your clothing catches on them and drawing becomes hampered. Yet you want secure and comfortable control. To me, grips are often a compromise between being comfortable to shoot or comfortable to carry. Now, I've also heard a lot of comments out there about the benefits of the Hogue wraparound grips for the P239 versus stock grips, even those who swear by the Hogue G10 grips as a better choice. Crimson Trace even has their intuitive grip activated laser system available for the P239 for about $400, so there are a lot of options out there. I have good sized hands with long fingers, so I was a little surprised to find the initial feel of these thinner stock grips on the SIG P239, although not super great for me, seemed actually okay. That is, until I'm firing the P239 40 caliber. The gun not only feels pretty snappy with these grips, they're not enough texture surface for reasonable control, just too smooth for me. I'm usually a big fan of the whole wrap around grips, and that's the case here too. These grips just feel better. However, the older I get, the more I appreciate a grip activated laser on my firearm. So the thicker hard rubber Crimson Trace grip system with its ergonomic overmolded finger groove design is looking pretty attractive. If I can find a better price on the laser grips, I may go ahead and add those to this gun. I've got to say I was pleasantly surprised about how much fun the P239 was to shoot. The magazines are a little stiff to load, but I didn't need the auto loader. The mags seat nicely and the slide is easy to rack. The cockers on SIGs are usually very good and the one on the P239 is excellent. Very smooth. The slide release is really smooth as well, although a little far back. Still very nice. The entire function of the P239 is just so smooth. It's a pleasure to operate. 
The P239 is a compact but feels like a full-size gun. As a metal gun, the P239 has some weight to it, but that helps provide a solid feel. I really like the large three-dot night sights. The initial double action trigger pull is smooth and not too long, with reasonable weight. Take up on single action trigger is a little long, but still excellent with a sure pull and defined reset. Recoil was manageable with the whole wrap around grips. I had good control of my accuracy at 24 feet was really good. As for cons, I've listened to a lot of internet reviews of the P239. There are a lot of different opinions out there. Comparison to the Glock 19 is common given its relative size. Overall, there are a number of negative points that have been made regarding the Sig Sauer P239. I've already acknowledged many of them. That it's outdated, it's heavy, the stock grips lack texture, position of the slide release is awkward, its controls are not ambidextrous, the trigger guard is unnecessarily large, it has limited capacity and double single action format is old fashioned. Trigger take up in single action mode is too long, it's expensive, the night sights add to that expense, as does the fact that it's a metal gun, and some find it too uncomfortable to shoot, and that the short and bore axis causes excessive muzzle lift, and oh yeah, some people think it looks ugly. I won't even begin to mention the arguments I've heard regarding ballistics of the 40 caliber. Even the fact that Sig Sauer has stopped production of the P239 isn't as bad a con as the fact that they may no longer be producing spare parts. It's my understanding that Sig is no longer even making mags for the P239, although even after five years they still seem available today from what I can see. However, if this is true, well, that's something to consider. Now as for pros, the P239 is an excellent example of precision manufacturing resulting in a metal state-of-the-art for its time, superbly functioning firearm. While there may be a lot of people who complain about the P239, rarely do you hear about malfunctions. And accuracy of the P239 is never in question. Although small and slim, it feels and runs like a bigger gun. It's highly reliable, durable, accurate, and operationally is very smooth. The SIG takedown system is simple. It has minimal felt recoil, points naturally, comes with good night sights and two magazines. Now personally, I prefer all metal guns, so the P239's extra weight is actually a good thing to me. I'm also a fan of double single action triggers, so again, I like that about the P239. And because it's a double single action with decocker, there's no need for an external safety. SIG designed the P239 to be carried with a round in the chamber and the hammer decocked. The double single action trigger itself acts as a safety as does the gun's decocking lever which makes the gun safe to carry even with a round in the chamber. And not only is the action of the decocker on this gun very smooth, the slide is easy to rack which I really like. And did I mention? The P239 is a very accurate pistol. Take down of the P239 is very easy. We're going to bring the slide back and lock it in place. Remove the magazine. There's the takedown lever. We're just going to pull that down. That allows us to remove the slide from the frame. We can remove the guide rod in the spring and the barrel from the slide. And that's it. Reassembly is the opposite. We're going to replace the barrel the guide rod in the spring and then we can return the slide to the frame and push the takedown lever back up that's it 
Now while the original manufacturer suggested retail price of a new SIG Sauer P239 and any of the three caliber offerings was about $1,000, actual sales were closer to about $900, with special sales as low as $750. Keep in mind that SIGs have a strong reputation for being state-of-the-art and of the highest quality, so even if you think the P239 is outdated, it still probably won't be cheap. Of course, SIG stopped production of the P239 five years ago, so what you're likely to find out there will be used. Used P239s have been selling for an average of about $500. For a SIG P239, realistically, that's a pretty good price. In like new condition, with two mags and the original case, expect to pay more. Of course, there are always steals out there, so if you're patient and cast your net wide enough, you could luck out with an exceptional deal, like about $400, or maybe even less. But be aware that there are a lot of law enforcement trade-ins of the P239 out there, so pay attention to condition. If the previous owner hadn't replaced these night sights, or provided the extra magazines, for example, that would have been additional cost to me. Now before we end today's video, I'd like to remind you that if you haven't already, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe down below. And thanks for watching. Okay, even though it's amazingly accurate, this P-239 was never intended as a target or a range gun. And being a big caliper gun, it's a little snappy to shoot, even with these Hogue grips, but that's okay. SIG designed this gun as a small, slim, concealable backup gun for professionals. As such, it's meant for accurate point-and-shoot quick shots. I know it only holds seven rounds, but again, I'm more concerned about shot placement. And for its size, Chambered in 40 caliber or 357 SIG, I believe it's a very capable weapon in that regard. Yes, it's expensive, but this is a good example of getting what you pay for, because as you would expect of SIGs in general, this is a precise quality firearm built to the highest standards. Now that being said, realistically, you do need to keep in mind that the P239 is no longer being produced, and long term, what that might mean in terms of support. Now in conclusion, you'll hear a lot of noise out there about the P239. Opinions are plentiful. It's certainly true that you should consider that the P239 is a discontinued model, but most of what you'll hear about is personal preference. So in the end, you need to do your research and certainly try one out for yourself. That's the only way to decide what really suits you. My recommendation is that if you're pretty set on getting a SIG and really like everything about the P239 but are concerned about it being discontinued, then you should take a look at the SIG P225. It's very close to the P239 in overall size and features, although it's a 9mm, and be prepared for the hefty manufacturer suggested retail price of $1,236. You might also take a look at the Glock 19 to which the P239 is often compared, which is also a 9mm but has twice the capacity and an average sales price of about $580 new. So in conclusion, I think it comes down to a careful and thorough assessment of your personal needs. If you're looking for a high-end, reliable, accurate, small, slim, concealable, big caliber metal pistol, the SIG P239 could be the answer. But try before you buy. Now, as for my opinion, well, I really like this gun. By the way, I own quite a few discontinued guns that I have no intent of ever selling. This P239 looks like it's going to be one of them. It's been flawless and fun to shoot, and I find I'm pretty good with it. In fact, over the past couple of years, I've been increasing the size of my everyday carry to a point that this P239 seems fairly comfortable to me. I hadn't really expected that. This DeSantis holster is okay, but I think I can do better. Although currently I'm still trying out different holsters, there's no doubt that this P239 certainly instills a lot of confidence. It's accurate, reliable, points naturally, and if I can get a good deal on those Crimson Trace laser grips, it might just become my newest everyday carry. Any weapon you carry is better than the one you left at home. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll be back for my next tabletop review. Until next time, stay safe.